Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Kishishin, and welcome to our podcast series, PPE, Podcast for Psychoeducation During the COVID-19 Pandemic. Today, we're discussing the stress you might be feeling if one or more of your medical procedures have been postponed or canceled due to the medical operational changes we are facing due to the pandemic. We're joined with Dr. Hamido Zaman and Dr. Nazarati and Ms. Valentine from the Department of Nephrology at LACUSC. Hi, thank you for having us. Today we'll be discussing some of the common emotional responses patients can feel if their medical procedures have been postponed, how to discuss these concerns in a meaningful way with your medical providers, and what can you do in the meantime regarding your medical conditions. Dr. Nasrati, what kinds of treatment and scheduling changes have you seen as a result of COVID-19? To start with, even though we have uh, tried to to avoid any delays in treatments, unfortunately, because of the COVID situation at the hospital, some of the imaging studies, some of the uh, infusion treatments, as well as biopsies have been postponed. But we have made uh, our utmost uh, uh, effort to make sure that no patient falls through the cracks and we we have them uh, covered and anything that must have been done have been ordered and uh, performed. Um, anybody from the team, can you give examples of the type of procedures that are specific to nephrology? Yeah, um, for us, we can specifically focus on advanced renal failure. These are patients who, you know, may be getting ready to start dialysis. So this is problem problematic in our patient population because, you know, a lot of times they have to go through different consulting services to get stuff done, as in like, you know, they have to go to an ultrasound to get, you know, ultrasound of their arms to see if they have good veins to get an AV fistula. They have to go to vascular surgery to get the actual vascular access. And these are not getting done because of COVID. You know, there's been kind of postponing what they call routine or non-emergent procedures but for our patient population, you know, this is their, their life that we're planning for, and it's really delaying that care. I agree 100 percent. We we had to change a lot of things during the COVID. Uh, the surgeons could not perform things. Imaging studies had to be shut down. Uh, laboratories were harder. Some of our patients even refused to go out of the house to do uh, laboratories that are needed to monitor. And uh, Ms. Valentine and Dr. Hamidisman know very well, but we did our best effort to make sure that at least we have a line of communications open with these patients to avoid uh, unnecessary and untoward uh, effects. Can you talk a little bit about how your patients have responded to these changes? I think it's uh, wide uh, and very different amongst uh, different patients. Patients are living in, sh in small quarters uh, and they are close with their family and there's, uh, uh, how should I say, conflicts that come to to the surface just because they, they are together 24 hours a day, as well as uh, anxiety, depression, and other things. And we have been asking our patients to know if anything affecting them, including mm -hmm. getting their medications and getting out of the house. Dr. Hamid Ozaman, you had a comment? Yeah, yeah. Um, so what I've encountered with the patients, I agree with Dr. Nazarati, it's um, fear and anxiety, mostly. Um, a fear of the unknown, uncertain times, um, you know, fear of patients going to pick up their medication or get labs and they'll get COVID, um, anxiety about when they're going to get the re appointment rescheduled, what's going to happen, how long it's going to take. So I've seen a lot of that. And there have been a few patients who have gotten upset because they just don't understand why we, why these changes have occurred, you know. Um, so, but I would say mostly fear and anxiety is what we've encountered with our patient population. I think that would be expected, right? The fear of the unknown is very powerful. Anger, because you might have been waiting for this procedure and the uncertainty of when it's going to happen. And then a sense of loss of control, probably, 
where you were expecting something and your expectations haven't been met. And now you don't know what to expect. What kind of suggestions has your team been providing them? We can immediately refer to these patients uh, to have uh, some support and be connected to the right uh, services. It's not only just medicine, there are other things going on at home that we try to concentrate on to to make their lives easier. And uh, if any patient uh, requires some uh, help with the food, we refer them to the food bank and of course the social worker can get involved as well. So, um, yeah, so in addition to uh, providing the patients with, um, you know, good communication in English and Spanish, um, I also provide the patients my direct phone number so they are able to reach me at any time for any questions, concerns that they might have. Um, I also try to give my patients um, online resources uh, from the National Kidney Foundation so they can um, go and and look for, um, you know, information on CKD modality options and transplant. So that's what I do from my behalf. Great. So it sounds like you're providing your patients with lots of different resources and trying to look at them holistically and where they are and what the immediate stressors, stressors are to their lives. Maybe it might be helpful if we yeah. debunk a few myths that are circulating out there. One question that patients might have is this idea that the city shut down, so is everything closed? Is my doctor's office closed? Are the labs closed? Or is the hospital closed? So um, that is not true because we are still open. Um, the hospital never closes. The clinics are also still open. So we're not just there for patients who we have scheduled to be seen because we think they're, you know, uh, they need to be seen soon, but also for any walk-ins. If someone forgets that they, you know, it's a phone visit or they feel like they need to come to clinic, we obviously screen them and then we see them in clinic. Also, before they come to um, their appointments to remind them that, you know, their appointments have been scheduled, that's a phone visit, we usually use, review their chart a week in advance to remind them to get labs, to make sure, you know, they have everything. So everything is kind of teed up and ready to go for their appointment, whether it's, you know, they happen to come in person or over the phone. And we're always available, like Yesenia is available, the nurses page us, they all have our cell phones, they can get a hold of us. If a patient really needs to talk to us or see us, we're available. So we are definitely still working hard and seeing people if they need to be seen, but we're available for them. I agree with her 110%. Absolutely. Uh, we are open. Uh, we are the front line to fight this infection. So we, we must be open, and we are open, and we have kept all the lines of communication open for our patients to reach us, and sometimes when they cannot reach us, we reach out to them. Whether telemedicine or face-to-face, -face, uh, we will see, but uh, at least to make sure our cohort of patients, our patients who are under our care, can uh, can be reached and uh, be attended to. And I'm sure this goes on across the country. Dr. Nasrati, I have another question. Actually, you mentioned telephone visits. Now, this is something that we've all gotten used to operating in a different way. We've had to get a little bit creative during this time. Can you maybe comment and the team comment on what patients can do, specifically your patients, to help prepare for telephone visits? Number one, we want our patients to sit down and with their family, sit down and think of issues that have been uh, coming up with their symptoms, with their disease, any new things are coming up, any, any complaint that they have, they should write it down so we, they have it ready when we get on the phone. Yeah, and then the resources that Yesenia provides, you know, just knowing that we are a team and we are looking out for the best interests for our patients, that they can trust us to, you know, talk to us about things or when we tell them, you know, what to do in terms of their health to, you know, comply with those recommendations. Um, and like Dr. Nazarati mentioned, we have a really good social worker who's there for assistance if they need it. Yesenia is a really good resource for them. Um, so having those things would be um, helpful. 
So let me try to summarize the topics that we talked about today. Um, it sounds like the patients and a lot of people in general are going through a time of uncertainty, but if your medical procedures have been postponed and you've kind of had them scheduled back to back and had some expectations about them, you might be feeling added stress, anxiety, um, and uncertainty, which could lead to feelings of anger. And these are all appropriate reactions that you might be feeling. This worry of uncertainty about when your procedures might be scheduled and what might happen to your health in the meantime can become overwhelming at times. But I guess the bottom line that we've come up with is that there are things in your control. There are things you can do as the patient. And one of the major things is to be in constant communication with your healthcare team. And it sounds like specifically in your clinic, the patients have a lot of access to you and a lot of resources available. Thank you, everybody. I really appreciate the discussion. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you.